weird and morbid still shots of their corpses at the bottom of said cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, okay? I didn't know that we talked about these things, but apparently we did. Lore boys, lore boying with your lore boy, lore boys. It's lore boy Ethan here, joined with lore boy Peter and lore boy Odo Venus Rosmaris. How are you guys doing lore today? Lore boy, lore boy. <laughs> I'm pretty lore boy if you ask lore boy. Yeah, well, I'm... if I lore boy you, then lore boy me, huh? That's what we always yeah. say. Yeah. Well, man. since you called me that, I got my chopsticks in my my mouth because that's a <laughs> walrus, right? That's a walrus. You have uh, that's you old have Italian chopstick. for walrus. <laughs> yeah. They keep crossing. I'm not doing it right. Yeah, no, you're you're a bad yeah. walrus. You're bad walrus. Bad, bad. You, <laughs> did you guys ever watch like Frozen Planet, where there was a bunch of walruses on a tiny island, and some of them were falling off cliffs? I'll get you, no, booty food so. packer. Yeah. It's one of the saddest and also fucking hilarious things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> just because they're so because they're so fat and they're just plummeting onto jagged rocks. Jeez. Yeah, but then there's. There's also the still shot of all the dead bodies. I know, it, it's, too, it's yeah. horrible, but like when we <laughs> watch our meme videos, people falling down is one of my favorite things. Yeah. And a walrus is just looks like a big fat guy. <laughs> it's, it's well, we're a comedy me. podcast, and we uh, <laughs> we talk about funny <laughs> things usually. Uh, these two well, have been uh, have been uh, morbid thoughts all night, but uh, uh, we have a good time here, don't we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a walrus. Look at me. Oh, right. there's a banana peel. <laughs> I slipped oh. and fell off a cliff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Plummeted to my Woody death. Dashed among my children. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's some good like skate three ragdoll physics though for the fall. Like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's good. that's my problem. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, so so today we're talking about Warhammer 40k. Do you guys know what Warhammer 40k is? Or I happen to have bought a pair of. Uh, Arminger Warglaves recently that I've primed and are set to paint with two different great houses. Very cool. Very cool. I, I played the first 39,999. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you're familiar with the Horus Heresies uh, and obviously the, the Great Strife and all those uh, all those eras, right? Need, uh, yeah, well, our more. previous 40K <laughs> the, episode was the pre 40K the episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did the Primarchs and the Great Crusade. We've done the Tyranid. We've, the Necron is a ye olde episode. Yeah, so we did the Primarchs and the Great Crusade. All right, t the Tyranid is uh, our most recent. We've done the Eldar. Uh, we've done, oh, yeah. we've done uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. And we did Warhammer 40k, like you say, the Great Primarchs, uh, or the Primarchs and the Great Crusade. And we did the Horus Heresies. Uh, the Primarchs and the Great Crusades are the only episodes that we're really going to uh, lean on or touch on this episode. Uh, we're not going to talk about Tyranid. We're not going to talk about Eldar. We're not going to talk about uh, filthy Xenos of any type. Uh, no heresy at all, I hope. He, he, no, uh, no. I mean, the heresy is so intrinsically tied to the identity of the Space Marines, it's kind of impossible to get away from it. But... Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, the the Horus Heresy, like if we're, uh, to Jamie's point, if we're in the year 40K, the year of our Lord, the year of our God Emperor, 40K, uh, the Horus Heresy was about 10,000 years ago, uh, like eight to 10,000 years ago. It, it took place okay, over yeah. that, those two millennia. Um, it, it feels like we recorded that episode eight to 10,000 years ago. So I yeah. <laughs> remember basically nothing of it. I'm pretty sure it was just me and Pete. I don't know if Jamie was on it. It, it might I was in Poland. Yeah. I remember listening to it in a bar in Poland and being like, I'm with my friends, sort of. Yeah. I, re I remember <laughs> what I had to draw. It was like a space marine that had dr dragged a guy out of bed and a just appointed him sheriff of a town. <laughs> okay. That, 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 <laughs> like, sound, that sounds vaguely familiar. Another guy He's on his shoulders or something, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. sounds vaguely familiar. I think familiar. we had Murphy on for that Mur one. Murph was on yeah. for that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we had, that was one of our, our it must have been first season uh, episodes. Uh, we, we had a guest, if not our first guest, uh, James Sane's uh, second season, very possible yeah, also. Uh, for for our me, our first guest was Namdi. Uh, our first guest, yeah, Namdi was yeah. our first guest. Now that, now that you say it, uh, when that was Street Fighter way back in the day, that was like yeah, that, episode we had five two mics. Something. 
We had yeah. two mics. Warned, and, listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were all uh, crowded around the table that I'm sitting at now. And, anyway, you know, was, is this uh, the Boar Lois, Lore Boys, Lore Boys podcast, or is this the Lore Boys, huh? We don't talk. Eh. We, don't, we don't just talk about the Lore Boys podcast. We talk about uh, subject matter. And dead walruses. And dead walruses sometimes. Occasionally yep. from time to time we do talk about <laughs> dead walruses. And walruses falling off cliffs, pump, plummeting to their deaths, and then uh, weird and morbid still shots of their corpses at the bottom of said cliffs. <laughs> 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 apparently, okay? I didn't know that we talked about these things, but apparently we do. Uh, <laughs> but we do have fun here. Huh? Uh, so I guess to preface this... Uh, this episode might feel a little scatterbrained because uh, I it, this was a request from a listener, uh, someone on the Discord, um, who asked asked us to to cover more uh, Space Marines and specific factions, and I was like, yeah, I'll totally do that. And I went into it uh, planning on covering a bunch of multiple factions in a single episode, and then I realized I didn't remember anything about the Horus Heresies, so I kind of want to retread a bit of old ground to just give everyone that same kind of base. And then I was like, okay, then I'll start diving into them. Then I had time to dive into one. So really, we're going to talk about one of the original legions who followed the Primarch, who uh, who were ruled by Primarchs. Um, hey, Ethan. Yeah. Which, le- which, which, which legion is it we're talking about today? It's going to be the Dark Angels eventually. Uh, like I said, we're going to oh. we're going to retread some old ground, get get some context for us because I like I didn't remember much. Like I. I know about the Primarchs, but I didn't remember how much we, or I still don't remember how much we actually talked about them. Um, obviously, we we did a whole episode on them, but I don't remember what specifically. I don't remember if I even named the Primarch of the Dark Angels that we're going to talk about. Um, so I, I, I wanted to just give everybody that kind of context without forcing them to go listen to those old things, without forcing myself to go listen to that old episode. Uh, well, like doing a quick recap is just like, sometimes we have like certain episodes where it's where you kind of give our listeners homework like yeah you're not really gonna understand a fucking thing in purgatory <laughs> if you don't listen to the hell episode yeah, first right, right exactly so like we'll do a quick recap for everybody little yeah. little little quick thing here and then then we'll move on yeah exactly so if you're if you're new to the show i think this episode should stand on its own and if you really enjoy it then you can go back listen to the uh primarchs episode and let me know what the fuck it's about because lord lord knows i don't remember uh yeah. so <laughs> We have uh, the Emperor of Mankind in the, the Warhammer 40k universe. Um, yeah. He's the, uh, sometimes called the Master of Mankind or the God Emperor. Uh, Master of Mankind? Called, that's mom, if you do the acronym. <laughs> <laughs> on, his, on his armor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> M-O-M. <laughs> yeah, the, or all, the, the, all the space marines, before they get installed in their armor, go and get a tattoo the with tattoo? the boys. Yeah, yeah. The mom tattoo. <laughs> yeah. All right, some of them um, already had the mom tattoo, and they're just like, no, no, just add the dots. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I recall correctly, he has been ascended to godhood by his followers, and he actually thought the whole religion thing was kind of stupid, right? It's like an ironic thing. Yeah, in a lot of ways. So, um, and we're not going to get into this too much because this is kind of what we talked about with the horse heresies and yeah. uh, the Great Crusade and all that stuff uh, in previous episodes. But he was born in the eighth millennium, and uh, he's known he's known as uh, a perpetual. And there was a number of these perpetuals. Uh, they were kind of regarded as like the next step in human evolution. Uh, okay, so. so um, it was the uh, it was another perpetual actually who who coined that that term the next step in human evolution Erda, uh, a longtime companion of the emperor since the earliest days of human history. Uh, they considered perpetuals to be the next step in human evolution. She would even dub them Homo superior uh, as opposed to uh, Homo erectus or Homo sapien, uh, which is a title uh, I think we can all be a little jealous of. I would love if uh, I just had a business card that said Ethan Palmer Homo superior. Yeah, I was gonna say that's also, uh, dude. You're about twenty five dollars plus shipping away from having that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think I got that kind of money, dude? I mean, uh, okay. So it's uh, Patreon dot com slash the Lord Voice, but uh, <laughs> Robo uh, Superior is very um, uh, that 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 that's very kind of uh, self absorbed, if you ask me. Or it's just like, well, what should we call ourselves? Oh, well, we're clearly the next step in human evolution. Like, why would you say that? Uh, it's like, oh, well, yeah. I, it's like we've we got penises with... on our nose. <laughs> well, you, we you can't with argue with Jordan. 
<laughs> we started with Michael Jordan where he mastered basketball but couldn't quite do baseball, but now we can do both. <laughs> we are homo superior. Yeah. Who are we, Barry Bonds? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, they are definitely superior, though. They are immortal to start. They're uh, much stronger, much faster. Um, the Emperor of Mankind uh, is very, very tall. Uh, if you just take an organ or, or, or the um, the stem cells out of the Emperor of Mankind and inject them into someone else, they basically grow to like 12 foot feet tall. Um, Isn't that the gene <laughs> seed or whatever? The, ge- the gene seeds is exactly yeah. uh, what it is and, and how they end up making space marines. So space marines are all like 12 foot tall, 10 to 12 foot tall uh, uh, monsters, basically. Is it like steroids though? Does it fuck your nuts up? Yeah, it makes your, it makes your testicles very small. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, same size, just comparatively. <laughs> oh, that's almost worse. Uh, so many of the perpetuals did seem to arise from natural changes to the human condition, and people were born naturally with superhuman psychic powers, immortality, incredible strength or speed, and many other deviations. Not all were born, though. Uh, the god emperor himself transformed a young administratum transcriber, Dahlia Cytheria, into a perpetual... Uh, who would become to be known as the guardian of the dragon. So she could watch over an unknown entity called the dragon of Mars. Um, cool. Uh, it was some Elon unknown. Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was Elon Musk. He finally makes it to space. Uh, he becomes frozen and dies. And it's just his Twitter following is somehow still there on Mars. And they find it <laughs> 20,000 years later. And they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and the God emperor of mankind is like, I don't know, but it seems dangerous. So let's fucking, <laughs> Keep an eye on it, huh? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. your job. <laughs> the God Emperor sends them like a peace treaty, and then they just like reply, "No, you" or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say he calls the God Emperor a pedophile. And yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, yeah. We're, not gonna, we're not dealing with this shit. <laughs> well, I'm gonna build a submarine to to burrow under Mars. Okay, like it's gonna be fun. <laughs> With The flamethrower. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, we're not we're not gonna talk too much about Dahlia, but uh, just kind of uh, an example to Peter's point that. They can make these things using, or uh, the emperor can make uh, perpetuals using what, what's called the gene seed. Yeah. Well, it, for me, I was just more of a clarification that they, some people, like some people were just born as superiors, opposed to it being like supremacist marketing. It's just like, okay, the god emperor is actually like different and doesn't just tell people he's different, right? Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> was, uh, he was born, he was born that way. He was born immortal, born very tall, born very strong, very fast, very smart. Okay. Uh, is that in, Lady Gaga song about him? In the Ra Ra mm, Gaga, yeah, Bad Romance was <laughs> written about him, but I don't, know. I don't no, know how you guess that, honestly. <laughs> Peter, I think you found the second line to Ethan's business card: is supremacist marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Homo superior supremacist marketing. Ethan Palmer <laughs> Esquire. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so the emperor was born in like the eight, I don't have any of this written down, but the, he was born in like the eighth millennium. Uh, in in Turkey on Old Earth, uh, as it's oh, called, cool. Earth. Ain't, uh, the year eight thousand is called Ancient Earth in in the context of Warhammer forty k, uh, which kind of makes, makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Thirty two thousand years is a very long fucking time. Yeah, yeah. well, like eight thousand years ago to us now is like ancient Earth. Six, well, like six yeah, thousand to BC. Less, yeah, two thousand years ago is ancient Earth. Uh, like twelve thousand years ago to us is the dawn of civilization, the cradle of life, like Macedonia. Yeah. The first the yeah. first of modern humans were sprouting up, so they wouldn't have even recognized probably Where people... is the cradle of life? Macedonia. It's like the the fertile no, it's like the the cradle of life itself is somewhere in like Ethiopia where like humans first first evolved and like spread out okay. in North where's, Africa. Where's Macedonia? I thought it was North in North Greece. Africa. Macedonia is north of Greece. It's in Europe. Okay. Oh. I know Alexander's from there. But that's about it. Uh, yeah. So, Ooh, rope. so it's it's probably safe to say like pre-8000, they wouldn't even recognize humans of that time as humans, you know? Those were like pre-humans or whatever. And that's not something that's written. That's Lore Boys canon, something that we've just come up with here. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, the Emperor, of course, was the most powerful of these perpetuals. Um, at least in a lot of ways, maybe just maybe just pure charisma made him the most powerful because he he would rise, become the god emperor of mankind, and live for uh, tens of thousands of years, dozens of thousands of years. Uh, this, <laughs> he, he was the shining example of everything a perpetual could strive to be. It was in that image of the perfect perpetual that the emperor would create the Adeptus Astartes, often called the Space Marines. The Space Marines were originally founded in response to Horus's treachery. 
Uh, and there's a veritable ton of information we could go through. We could literally talk about Space Marine chapters for the next thousand plus episodes. Uh, we won't do that, but I am kind of planning at least a couple more like this. So if you don't like it, keep it to yourself. If you do like it, tweet at me and encourage <laughs> me some more. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got to start somewhere, right? So let's start with the original 20 Legions. And if we talked about these on the uh, Horus Heresy episodes, I know there's some chapters which we did talk about for sure. Uh, Horus's Legion, we would have talked about for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'm, we're going to just jump into a bunch of uh, interesting stories for ones that I, I find the most uh, compelling. Uh, I, say 20 um, I say 20 Legions, it's more like 18, but we'll get into why. Uh, our... Just, just so I don't ask this question a million times, uh, do any of these legions end up kind of changing either tech-wise or politically into the current Space Marine chapters that we deal with now? Yeah, a ton of them. Uh, so the Space Marine chapters, a lot of them are uh, named after the legions that they uh, that spawn them. Okay. Um, there's some which go on to become uh, Chaos Space Marines, which is, uh, for anyone who's never played Warhammer, it's like another army that you can choose when you're playing Warhammer 40k, uh, is the Chaos Space Marines as opposed to the Space Marines. Completely different rule sets and all that stuff and things that they do. Um, but some of these chapters do get corrupted by, or some of these legions do get corrupted by the forces of Chaos, the Ruinous, the ruinous Powers, as they're known, uh, and go on to become Chaos Space Marines when the chapters are formed. So yeah. guys, I don't know a lot about Warhammer, so I just googled like Dark Angels uh, just to see what they look like, and they got these cool green armor and stuff. And Games Workshop is selling Dark Angels leggings, so if you want those, you can get. Those. Do they have uh, okay. dark? Do they have Dark Angel jeggings? Um, some oh, game for the oh, game for the jeggings. Yeah, let me know if you do oh. find jeggings though, because I'm. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know. I'll I'm let here you for know. that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> if you want some Dark Angel merch, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm suspicious of what's in that photo. I know for a fact that women, there is no women in the, who play Warhammer 40k. It's all just crusty <laughs> dudes like us. <laughs> As somebody who's who's been to several uh, of the C Canadian convent Games Workshop conventions for Warhammer 40k, I can confirm there's no women there. Though actually, no, no, that's not true. There was one woman there. It was my best friend Bobby's mom who drove us, and she came. Oh, out okay. us. <laughs> she was the best. She would like get us costumes when we were playing D and D and light up candles and Hell stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, Joanne, I know you're not listening, but know that I love you. Uh, I love her. You're, you're a, so a wonderful woman, or a wonderful yeah. woman, a god empress of sorts. Yeah, if you will, yeah. if you will. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick pass over the chapter names, then we can dive into the particular story that I'm interested in talking about today uh, okay. from the Legion uh, in particular. Uh, future episodes that I'm gonna do will probably dive into of other legions or maybe the chapters that spawn from them, whatever are kind of like the coolest stories. Um, there's 20 legions there. Each of those broke into like a hundred different chapters. Uh, so there's like, could you name all, every chapter from every legion, please? Mm, I mean, I could, if I pulled up the wiki right now, but that doesn't feel like compelling radio for our listeners. Ninth edition so. expansion, buy new toys. 10th edition <laughs> expansion, buy new toys. Yeah. They have very strange alien names. 11th edition expansion, buy new toys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's an interesting point. Like, they do. I I do feel like a reason for making so many chapters and so many legions in the first place is so that you can market them as like, oh, you can you can buy this and paint them this way, and that's like the new legion that you're purchasing or whatever. But um, yeah, uh, there, there there's a ton of them, and they're all. I mean, I love these things anyway. Like I bought some. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Like I'm just being I'm just being an asshole. I'm just being negative. Because corporations love money, damn it. Some of them are really cool as hell, though. I'm looking through them, and yeah. Dark Angels seems like a cool faction. Uh, so if you want to hear me talk about a particular story or a chapter, uh, crunch at us. Um, hit us up on the Discord or something. I'll never get sick of talking about Warhammer. So while I go through the names of the top 20 legions, or the, the original 20 legions, I want you guys to tell me which Harry Potter death cult to the god emperor of mankind the sorting hat would sort you two into. Okay. Easy. Very good. <laughs> Uh, so number one, the first chapter founded was the Dark Angels. They're Slytherin. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking you guys to compare these to the four houses of Harry Potter. I'm asking which one you guys would most want to be in, which uh, okay. cult you, Jamie, and you, Peter, oh, would want to join. I I'll see. let okay. you talk then. So based I know based which purely on name, and then if we get into the Dark Angels and you're like, I kind of like that, we'll go with that. Or if we get into okay. one of the other ones and you guys like that, then you can change your mind in the future. But for now, just, just okay. based on name, which one you guys okay. like the most. So there's Dark Angels, 
Number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, missing and deleted from Imperial Records. <laughs> so, All right. So this is okay. why I said there's 20, but really there's 18 because two of them have been completely scrubbed from all traces of history. I wonder if those guys are like the 404 armor not found, and it's just yeah. like checkered pink and black texture from Gmod yeah. on their uh, armor. <laughs> one, one of them's one of them's that. The other one is the uh, the chrome uh, no internet connection. The dinosaur <laughs> just, uh, oh, yeah. on their armor. Yeah. Uh, okay, so number three is the Emperor's Children. Okay. Number four is the Iron Warriors. Number five is the White Scars. Number six, Space Wolves. Number seven, Imperial Fists. Number eight, Night Lords. Number nine, Blood Angels. Number 10, Iron Hands. Number 11, Missing and Deleted from Imperial Records. Number 12, (laughs) The World Eaters. Hungry boys. Uh, Number 13, The Ultramarines. Number 14, The Death Guard. Number 15, The Thousand Sons. Number 16, The Luna Wolves. Number 17, The Word Bearers. Number 18, the Salamanders. 19, Raven Guard. 20, Alpha Legion. Um, huh. I don't have enough mascara to be a Dark Angel. So <laughs> I think I think I identify. You're, I like Space Wolves. You're no big titty goth girlfriend. No. Space I like Wolves. Space Wolves. Goth girlfriend. <laughs> I remember ta- we talked about the a couple of those already. I think Space Wolves was somewhere. I've heard about them through cultural osmosis. I do uh, Thousand Suns because I think I've seen them before. They're like the they're like the Egypt fanboys, right? Uh, yes, I think so. I, uh, I, don't know. I'm I'm saying that I'm vamping like I know, but I don't know. Um, so Ultramarines, you guys, they're the regular guys. They're the 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 iconic blue, the ones that became the Starcraft Terran Marines. Right. That's yeah. the Ultramarine. It's like the the pinnacle blue or whatever. Thousand Suns also look blue. They look blue and gold according to the wiki. But and Space kind of, Wolves also <laughs> looks blue. <laughs> kind of Egyptian, I guess. Uh, the Luna Wolves, you guys should know that that was Horus's legion uh, oh, that ended okay. up started kicking off the Horus Heresy and saying the God Emperors. Not all that. Okay. Uh, so. Well, for, after uh, Googling, I want to change to Luna Wolves because I like the look of them more than the blue space wolves. Dude, they, they've mullen Horus. Yeah, that's all right. Guys. I kind of like them. They look <laughs> cool as hell. Um, I mean, I say they're bad guys. I'm a big fan of orcs and tyranids. So, yeah, yep, exactly. You are you are literally like the 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 planet devouring hordes of chaos <laughs> like, like, exactly. not directly in the case of the tyranids but i know like didn't the orcs get created and they're like super powerfully magical but they're just too stupid to realize it yeah. they just love to fight man like when you have yeah. when you have an orc army uh, and I, I play orcs in age of sigmar when you have an orc army if you just have units that are too far away from combat they'll just start fighting with each other yep uh because they're bored yeah i'm gonna rep my thousand sons until i find out they've done something horrible so all right <laughs> So I was I was kind of going through the list, and I promise I didn't get lazy here. But I was I was like I wrote down the list of all the legions that we know of, the eighteen, uh, and then I was like, okay, I'll start um, I'll start looking into interesting stories. And I got to the first one, and I was like, you know what, this is a fine story. So good enough, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. good, good enough. What us. are the chances? Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it's worth mentioning that uh, Total War, the Warhammer game, is seventy five percent off on Steam right now. So if you guys want to get into that, it's a really good time to get into Total it. War Warhammer's great game. Uh, I haven't played the second one, but uh, I'd love to. If you like the Total War series, if you like like the realistic RTS combat, um, definitely scoop it. It's it's a it's a great pickup. So, uh, to start with a quote from Inquisitor Bastalek Grimm: "Since the founding of their legion at the birth of the Imperium, the Space Marines of the Dark Angels have been dreaded by their enemies and held in awe by those they protect." Stubborn and relentless in battle, ever vigilant and zealous in their pursuit of their duties, the Dark Angels are among the Emperor's most faithful servants. Yet, it was not always so. For ten millennia, the Dark Angels have harbored a sinister secret, an act so terrible and shameful it threatens everything the Dark Angels hold most dear, and and may yet bring them eternal damnation. Okay, cool. So that's uh, that quote was at the top of the wiki, so I was like, okay, this seems interesting, let's just go with the Dark Angels then. Easy, easy I mean, choice, easy wife, easy life, huh? Yeah, just with the cool. name uh, Dark Angel, I would get the impression that they're pretty into like Evanescence fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, like I posted one into our group chat of like this dude in awesome green armor with these big silvery wings and like a hammer. They're green. Looks yeah. cool as hell, dude. They're like green. Archangels are green. Oh, that is fucking. Oh, that is actually sweet as shit, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as like miniature painting goes, Games Workshop does some uh, incredible work. There's a, there's a lot oh, yeah. of problems with the company. You know, we won't get into it here. Listen to any of our other Warhammer 40k episodes or Warhammer episodes in general to hear me complain about Games Workshop. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> games Workshop. Is it games or is it work? Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's my main gripe with them, really, is like, come on, pick a side. Branding. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you heard my branding at the top of the show. It's all Lore Boys, you know? It's not, uh, it's not Lore Boys Workshop. It's not uh, Games Lore Boys. It's just Lore Boys, okay? It's one yeah. or the other. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Uh, so the Dark Angels are considered among the, the most powerful and secretive of the Loyalist Space Marine chapters. They were the first legion of the original 20 Space Marine legions to be created in the, during the first founding of the 30th millennium. Okay, wow. So, uh, yeah, I, the, the order that I gave them in was the order of creation. Oh, I'm surprised the Ultramarines were so far down the list. 13. Unlucky yeah. number 13. And uh, it's one of those things, like, I feel like they probably created the list like games workshop the company created the list and then filled like backfilled the lore and yeah. ultramarines in uh the market uh of common acceptance and, and you know the public market became the most popular and so now they and then so then a lot of books were written about them a lot of content was written about them but they were already the 13th you know so they just they stuck with that, which is I think a cool way of of them kind of organically coming up in like the storyline of uh, the 40k universe. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's not necess- it's not necessarily going to be just like the first guys you make are are the face of the company, right? Do you yeah. uh, you go through different iterations and shit. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, like uh, shit on Games Workshop all you want. It's hard to argue that there's uh, a lot more fleshed out universes out there you know like they they rival tolkien they rival dungeons and dragons they like they arrive they, they go toe to toe with the best of them with just the pure amount of lore that you can squeeze out of out of every single thing we're gonna t- we're gonna spend a whole episode just talking about the, the one specific chapter of the space marines the dark angels yeah i mean we speaking, can keep twisting yeah. speaking of like places a lot of lore like i think loreboys uh dot com like they have hundreds of hours of lore in a podcast form it's at crazy. least a couple hundred yeah yeah, I was just thankful that uh, it's like, yeah, they they, they just they have so much of it. Just we can just keep squeezing yeah. that bag over <laughs> more boys' buckets. Always going to fill up with more hammer. <laughs> I uh, I'm I'm glad that we're not doing the four hour episodes anymore. So <laughs> as yeah. as much, could you imagine? Because when we started, and for anyone listening who doesn't know, when we started, we we did a couple burner episodes that we just ended up throwing out because they were like four and a half hours long. And by the end of it, we were all just like exhausted because we've never done a podcast before yeah um, and i drank like two or three four locos in one of them. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah it was bad news again again for anyone who's never listened to the old episodes we just used to get fucking shit house and, and talk about lore uh not to say it that we a don't real gorilla podcast originally <laughs> before we uh before we ship before we shaped up and it was basically just like we wouldn't start until yeah. each of us had like had already started drinking. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's one where Ether was just trying to get through it. Me and Peter would not shut up about Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! We yeah. were talking about tweeting him, getting him on the show. You think Nick Cannon is a big Warhammer 40k fan? I, I did tweet late. at him. I remember doing that at Jamie's house. I totally sent Nick Cannon a tweet and just told him to crunch at us because I was probably so drunk I couldn't see out of both eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That would okay. Up. Okay. So, 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 not like the old days. I know I'm like four and a half beers deep with a gin and tonic somewhere mixed in, but uh, to to actually get back on topic, uh, though they claim complete allegiance and service to the Emperor of Mankind, uh, the Dark Angels' actions and secret goals at times seem at odds with that professed loyalty, as the Dark Angels strive above all other things to atone for an ancient crime of betrayal committed over ten thousand standard years ago against the trust of the Emperor. During the time of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Uh, oh, okay. that sounds exhausting now, doesn't it? What? Committing Just a, trying to atone for a crime from for 10,000 10, years, years ago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a lot. I, in, in a way, that's kind of, Chris, no, not 10,000, but just, if you think about it, just 2,000 years ago, that's kind of Christianity in a nutshell, right? 
In a just, nutsack? In a nutsack. Well, you know, I agree to disagree, but... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what you almost <laughs> said. I, uh, anyways, yeah. yeah, maybe, but maybe in a nutsack yeah. in a nutshell. Sorry, I'm that's, from I'm from Lithuania. That's that's the expression there. It's, it's in a nutsack. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long time though. And do we know what their crime was? We're we gonna get into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get into or? it. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, so the Dark Angels were from Caliban, uh, an imperial death world located galactic north of Earth. How do you establish north, south, east, west in space? You pick it it's constantly spinning. Great. Uh, so I knew that sentence could raise two questions. And I, I, I answered both of them because I was like, hey, you know, one, these idiots are going to ask one of these two questions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Galactic North is... Uh, so Warhammer 40K takes place in the Milky Way galaxy, right? Yeah. Which is a spiral arm galaxy. So it's relatively flat. If you look at it like it was a flat dinner plate spinning, right. then you pick where Earth is and, and you, you just... Choose a direction. You choose a direction. That's North, West, East south the rest of them okay you know okay. uh it's they, so overwhelming I, the one thing in vr i can never get used to is the space games where you're you don't know which way is up that is the most sickening and i, I don't know how people get around in space i guess not maybe it's because up is relative but you're still sitting in a chair in a building <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's not uh, just those ones aren't so bad for me it's the the stick locomotion that really uh, fucks me up as as a project uh, manager on testing of vr games it's uh right. Stick locomotion just makes me sick to my fucking stomach. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, uh, if, if you like VR, uh, try it out. Or if you're interested in VR, try it out. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool experience, but makes some people sick. Just I'm, with I'm the like the wanton opulence of like the design of some things in Warhammer, like their their battle fleets, their and their Gothic armadas or whatever the fuck they're called, those ships that are the size of planets, to just to establish galactic north i do just imagine the emperor ordering a forty thousand foot weather vane be mounted on the north pole of the planet <laughs> solid gold weather vane yeah, yeah exactly. it's just the it's, it's, of the it's rooster not... on the top it's that dinosaur from the chrome thing oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> an ancient rune from the before times i was yeah. gonna make so close to the same joke but different punchline i yeah, we have we have similar minds. We usually go to the same jokes. A lot yeah, of except I go to yeah. dicks more often because I was going to say instead of the the rooster is going to be the emperor's dick just po- pointing in a direction. Oh, so. because oh, rooster yeah. is cock. He's cock. <laughs> That's my it, thought. Yeah. And also, cool. kind of full of himself. This guy, God Gene Emperor Z. of Mankind. Come on, really, bud? Homo superior. I mean, so, hmm? so the <laughs> so the first the first question. <laughs> The first question was, uh, "How do you find North in the ga- in the galaxy?" Uh, and it turns out, you just you assume it's all flat. The the galaxy is flat. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Fucking <laughs> 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 <Like an, laughs> ice shelf at the end of the galaxy. Yeah. How how yeah. would sun, how would sunsets work in a three D galaxy, moron? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as someone who's been playing Minecraft lately, like the, that works. You just assume it's flat, and you have a positive uh, and negative up and down. Yeah, you're good, Ethan. Got um, it through. So the second question was, what is a death world? Because Caliban, as I said, was an imperial death world. I did get distracted by the uh, cardinal directions in space. <laughs> yeah. to, 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 uh, I forgot to ask that question. It sounds awful. So uh, a, death, a death world is a world simply deemed too inhospitable for full human colonization. Uh, or just oh. maybe really difficult colonization. Like. I looked up Death Worlds and I wrote this whole thing and then I actually look I actually finished researching Caliban and Caliban seems to uh be more or less habitable uh or, or colonizable, if you will. Uh so I don't know why Caliban specifically was considered a death world. So you can have like barren rockscapes constantly racked by hyper volcanoes and ion storms and it's like, yeah, you can't really set up shop there. That's, like, too difficult, you know? And yeah. you have, like, planets full of, like, these super inhospitable alien life forms that are just, like, constantly trying to kill you, which seems to be where Caliban gets its denomination. Uh, so the world Caliban possessed uh, a cruel and harsh environment um, of of these great beasts. So there was, like, massive monsters or just particularly dangerous monsters, which just used to, like, hunt humans, I guess. It's um, like Australia. There's just like, uh, don't leave your space boots yeah. unattended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside your space marine tent. You have the, your space marine boots, you have to turn them upside down and like shake them every morning to make sure. Check no- out a bunch of giant spiders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's not much gravity, so they kind of just like float out at yeah. weird angles, <laughs> knock them out. They just drift down to the ground. Uh, the, the spiders here have nine legs. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> what yeah, could, ew. yeah. What could be scarier than eight legs? Uh, <laughs> Arachna superior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the great the great beasts were uh, they were warped and mutated into fanatical predators by the unnatural forces of chaos. Imperial scholars believe this was due to the Caliban system's close proximity to the Eye of Terror. And the Eye of Terror is uh, like a galactic warp storm. So real quick for anyone who hasn't listened to our past episodes on 40K, the warp is like this uh, where all psychic energy comes from. It's where the forces of chaos and the ruinous powers come from. It's this like unseen extra dimensional space which uh, exists where living creatures exist. So if you listen to our last 40K episode with the Tyranids, you know that uh, it only exists where living creatures are because the Tyranids can travel intergalactic space and they're unique in that because everything else uses the warp to travel uh, quickly across great distances. Uh, but it, it fucks people up. So there's like uh, it's like a hell dimension, a hellraiser dimension, basically. Uh, and there's this great storm that kind of encompasses Caliban um, of, of the warp. Uh, like a storm of the warp that encompasses Caliban. It's like leaking onto our side of the Milky Way sort of thing, yeah. I guess. And it's turning... Well, it, it exists all across the Milky Way. It just doesn't exist at Earth in particular. Okay. Uh, it, but there's there's a storm of the warp, like uh, where it's like it's breaking through more right. near, okay. near Caliban, and it's taking all the cows and all the squirrels, and it's making them like, uh, you know, fucked up squirrels and fucked up cows. Dire squirrels, if you will. Dire cows. Like... Plague squirrels. Exactly. Yeah. So the human Old inhabitants... McDonald's had a plague farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. Uh, <laughs> so the, the human inhabitants of Caliban were forced to live in huge fortresses and castles located in clearings hacked from the forests of the planet, cut off from, <laughs> cut off from Terra, and the rest of mankind's interstellar community by the warp storms that savaged the galaxy during the Age of Strife. Human civilization on Caliban developed into a semi-feudal state with most of the population ruled over by a small warrior elite who are very similar in function and form to the medieval European knights of Old Earth's past. So if anybody missed the Middle Ages, we brought it back, baby. We brought it back on Caliban. <laughs> nice. nice. I love how you said they were forced to live in castles. They are forced <laughs> to live in these giant, luxurious places. Like, uh, thank God we arrived at this planet with so many slaves, too. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, they were literally forced to live in castles because, like, if they didn't have stone walls, like, these beasts would come into their homes and, and rip them okay. apart in the middle of the night. So I don't know if that counts as a luxury, you know? Uh, hey, I guess that's why you tents. have a castle. <laughs> so, Is that why I have walls? Why do we have walls, guys? It's also beasts. to keep out. Yeah, great beasts. Oh. Great beasts that would, that would come into your house in the middle of the night and rip you apart. So uh, we have this, like, kind of, like, warrior caste knighthood system and um the the leaders uh the leaders of caliban the various elected officials of caliban used to send like put bounties on monsters and and call it like quests and be like oh you know the uh the dire pig the the space pig is attacking our town this week whoever kills it will earn my daughter's hand in marriage and will be the next feudal lord of, of our state Oh, okay, so they they basically fully embraced their D and D campaign planet, and yeah. we're just like, it's like, well, it, it worked in the eighties. Which eighties? Uh, yeah, yeah. The nineteen eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen eighties. They have like, do they go through different nostalgias every like twenty thousand years, where everybody gets really nostalgic for like the twenty thousand and eighties, where like yeah. hair, metal, hair metal comes back for an eleven thousandth time? I mean, there's no way they ever got nostalgic for something as old as us, right? Uh, I guess it, not, it's eh? it's kind of it's kind of tragic to think that nobody in the Warhammer 40k universe ever listened to the lore boys. They might because remember it broadcast just like is at light speed. It just goes infinitely off into space. Like what if the lore boys they might have that accidentally <laughs> with the naked dudes on it? Yeah. Imagine imagine if like top secret encoding in the future is just whatever the internet does now, and they just end uh -huh. up like cracking the code. So you have these knights going out. One day, there's this group of knights led by this uh, knight Luther, who discover uh, a young uh, a young man crouched crouched in the forests of Caliban, all by himself, covered in mud, Tarzan esque. This man would turn out to be uh, the Primarch Lion L. Johnson. Well, I guess Lion oh. L. Johnson, as he'll come to be known, but it's one okay. of the Primarchs. 
so uh, if you've listened to our Primarch episodes, you know that the Primarchs were created using the gene seed from the Emperor. He created 20 men, uh, men and or women, to uh, become superhumans with him and just rule his, his armies for him. Um, due to the ruinous powers of chaos, uh, they, they, who are like the evil gods of the Warhammer 40k universe, they got up to some mischief and they took all the primarchs, primarchs and they like scattered them throughout the universe for a while. Uh, so this is where one of them ended up. He ended up on this planet, Caliban. Uh, Raised by space wolves like Mowgli. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, he was like, it's the bare necessities. I'm going to kill all the Xenos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's he's discovered by he's discovered by these knights. These knights are, are belong to a monastic group known as the Order. Okay. Uh, so the Order is like whatever a faction on Caliban. Uh, the Order had a reputation across the world for the honesty, nobility, and fearless skill of its brother knights in battle. Uh, so uniquely among amongst the many knightly orders of Caliban, the members or brothers of the Order were selected by merit rather than hereditary inheritance. So, Ooh. so it's not like a noble house. It's not like a hunting and fishing club. It's like a, Hey, if you're a bad, if you're, are you a bad dude? Then you can, you can join our podcast, the bad dudes podcast. Uh, <laughs> Whatever oh, happened rip. to them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so any Cal- Calibanite could join the order, no matter how low, low born they might be. Contingents of brother knights from the order traveled across the planet, giving their aid wherever it was needed. It okay. sounded like he almost said lore boy instead of lowborn. And I love yeah. that comparison. Uh, hey, I mean, we are, I mean, we got to be the most lowborn of lowborn, right? Like, we have to be the most lore, lore boy of lowborns. Lore, yeah, loreborn. Lore Would borns? we be loreborn? Uh, we're the loreborns, yeah. Now from FromSoft, lowborn. Lowborn. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so Jamming beer into your thigh to heal up. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it was on one of these expeditions, one of these quests that the that a band of the order came upon the wild man who lived in the forest, who, who would turn out to be a primarch. Uh, thinking of a monster, the knights were ready to kill the primarch when one of their number, sensing that there was something more to the creature than, than was apparent, halted his fellows. This young knight, Luther, and his fellow warriors then returned to Ald- Alduruk, which is um, the fortress monastery on Cal- uh, Caliban. Is that QUE? Is it like uh, is it future French? Uh, no, it's uh, Alde, uh, Alde It's um, UKH. UKH. Anyway, not important. Uh, A L D U R U K H. Taken with them, the man born of the forest, or seemingly born of the forest, because because of his appearance and the place of his discovery, the order gave the, the order gave the wild man the name Lion L Johnson, which meant the lion, the son of the forest, in the Calibanite dialect of Low Gothic. Johnson easily adapted to the ways of humans and learned to speak and reason remarkably quickly under the knight's tutelage. Okay, so knife and fork. The, the My Fair Lady thing was like a, a montage, basically, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They okay. uh, they pretty womaned him, pretty womaned him, and uh, taught him how to be a, a, a fully functioning member of society instead of a prostitute. and demigod. As yeah. <laughs> Julia Roberts was a demigod in that movie, right? <laughs> I think Julia <laughs> Julia Roberts is a demigod in real life, maybe. So uh, I'm not willing to say she's not. So, uh, Luther and the Lion uh, would form a bond of friendship and car- camaraderie, and they both rose quickly through the ranks of the Order. With the Order numbers growing, new monasteries being built, the two friends proposed something we've all pitched to our friend group after a night of partying. Uh-oh. A crusade, baby. We're going, oh, yeah, we're hell go- yeah. We're going on crusade. We've all been there, right? Uh, if I didn't fall asleep all the time when we, when we used to party, we would have done a couple <laughs> of crusades already. <laughs> Uh, so they pitched going to war with the great beasts of Caliban to cleanse the planet of the scourge which had, which had kept them in the dark for so long. With Johnson's unrivaled unrivaled ability for planning and tactics, uh, they would ensure the golden age for the once troubled planet. But uh, he also lived among the beasts, so he could like he technically knows how they operate, right? Yeah, it's it's unclear how long he actually lived among them. Like he's immortal, so probably he lived among them for quite a long time and just like survived. Okay, yeah. Um, but it's also he knows how they operate. He's like a master tech tactician because he has the gene seed of the emperor, who's a superhuman. Like the emperor right. is like the Mary Sue, like like the ultimate Mary Sue of any of any fiction that you've ever read. Like the god yeah. emperor of mankind is just like no no he can do anything whatever he wants you know and he would just never be bad at it. Who's who's Mary Sue and why can't she do everything? It's a literary term, meaning yeah, if, if you write a character that's like 
too strong for no good reason and just has no flaws, it's like coin to Mary Sue. I uh, so jumping the shark was from the Happy Fawn Days. Dude. Yeah. It's from yeah. Happy Days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder where Mar- I want to read the Mary Sue book. The, like, ori- awesome. the original Mary Sue. Like yeah. Geralt from The Witcher is often considered a Mary Sue because he's kind of like, other than the fact people are kind of racist at him, he is basically good at everything, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, um, I feel like he's bad with girls sometimes. I guess depending on your dialogue options. Yeah. So, so <laughs> the term Mary Sue comes from the name of a character created by Paula Smith in 1973 for her parody story, A Trekkie's Tale, published in her fanzine Menagerie Number no. 2. The story named Lieutenant Mary Sue, the youngest lieutenant in the fleet, only 15 and a half years old, and satirized, un- satirized un- unrealistic characters in Star Trek fan fiction. So it's from Star okay. Trek. Or it's oh, from okay. Star Trek but, fan fiction specifically. But it was making fun of prior Mary Sues in yeah. Star Trek fan fiction. Okay. Seemingly. But it's always like the Sonic OC is always like, you know, Peter the Hedgehog, who is like just the coolest guy and he can skateboard very fast and likes to smoke <laughs> pot and shit, right? Like, it, it's fan fiction created the Mary Sue and then some lady just gave it a name, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. In the 70s, God, humanity is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lion, uh, Lion and uh, Luther are like, we're going to go to war with the Great Beasts of Caliban. Um, and it would it would go well. They, they, would, they would cleanse the Great Beasts. They'd be like, hey, you know, we're humans. We win over beasts. We have gun and, gun and power sword. We can kill them. You know, they brought, they did, did bring brand their death world afterwards. They did. They did bring back swords in uh, Warhammer 40 K, but they just added power or chain in front of them. It's either a chain yeah. sword <laughs> oh, or a power yeah. sword. Uh, and they, they work much better like that. So it's a good upgrade to most technology is to add a row of vibrating teeth. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My iPhone had that. It'd be so much better. Yeah. If my denture, <laughs> if my dentures had that, they'd be so much better. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> in recognition, <laughs> honey, can you pull the rip cord? I need to eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just destroys every meal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got away from me! <laughs> eat, eating their way across the kitchen, like chew through the table, like ah, oh, son of a bitch, not another one. It would need one of those kill switches, like on a treadmill, where if you get too far away, it just yeah, yeah. It just pulls it right up. You have to, you have to like clip your knife to your wrist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to pull the ripcord properly. Ariane's got her head up, or like her foot up on your head on the Wait. table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no for leverage. I like the way it vibrates, though. So does she. So, uh, In recognition for his triumph, Lion was proclaimed Supreme Grandmaster of the Order and of Caliban as a whole. Ah, uh, damn. So while Luther didn't openly begrudge his friend's success, it must have been kind of hard for him to see his friend who he'd found squatting by himself in the forest to become king of the planet he was born and raised on. Uh, Luther, in a lot of ways, found Lion, and Lion was like a savage boy, a feral kid, and yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of raised him as his own. Uh, obviously, Lion's Lion's daddy is the emperor. Like, un- unbeknownst to everybody in the story at this time, Lion's, Lion's father, as much as he could have had a father, was the emperor. Uh, yeah, because the Primarchs, were they ever born and then implanted with the seed, or are they just straight kind of pseudo-clones? I don't actually remember. I'm okay, sh- yeah, I don't We remember. probably talked about it on the last episode. I don't remember if they were just, like, existing humans who were injected with the stuff, or if they were, uh, like, freshly cloned. But I know you can inject, like, young humans with the gene seed, and they become space marines. That's how you make the yeah, starties. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so while the two were uh, kicking butt and taking names, conquering over the great beasts of Caliban, there was a self-styled emperor of mankind who was tearing through the galaxy on what had been hi- what had been his own crusade, the Great Crusade, which would see the galaxy of man united under a single banner, that of the emperors. So we've talked about the Great Crusade a, a few times on this episode, or we just mentioned it a few times on this episode. It was just uh, bringing all these various planets with humans on them. In, under like one banner one faction we all worship the god emperor of mankind you know here here across the galaxy that's no easy feat no easy feat man uh from what i've heard the galaxy be pretty big space flat thankfully though space bigger than whales I'll tell you that much and you whale sure? and whales pretty big you haven't really? read stephen king dude there's like big old <laughs> space whales all over the place yeah <laughs> <and> turtles <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
so during this time, during the time of the Great Crusade and their crusade against the Great Beasts, uh, by cosmic coincidence, the very Astartes who had been spawned from the Primarch Lionel Johnson ended up on Caliban. They quickly realized the man was indeed their long-lost daddy. So our, our timeline of events here is the Emperor creates his Primarchs, one of whom is this guy who would be found on a planet and be dubbed Lionel Johnson. Right. He takes their 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 genetic gene seeds uh, as soon as they're born kind of thing. He turns his back. Uh, the chaos gods steal his Primarchs, his children, scatter them across the universe. And he's like, well, still got their genes, so we're good. He creates armies, uh, like clone armies, like Star Wars-esque Bubba Fett clone armies of uh, the Primarchs. And then he sends them out into the universe to conduct his great crusade. Okay. So the legion that was spawned from Lionel Johnson just happens to coincidentally end up on Caliban and ends up getting there and being like, Hey, take me to your leader. And they're like, Oh, we have a Supreme grandmaster of the order and of Caliban as a whole. And they're like, okay, cool. Yeah. That that's what we meant by leader. And then it yeah. turns out it's like, <laughs> They just get there and they're like one of the, one of the space marines just drops his juice box and he's like daddy and, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and after all these years buying smokes and and a pack of milk uh, pack of milk <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> then there's there's dad stand stand at the they, it's like they go like their dad left to go buy a uh, a carton of smokes and a pack of milk at the grocery yeah the, a trillion the light years store. away yeah. <laughs> and they're like you know what. It's been a while. I'm going to go check on dad. And they get there and dad's there. And he's just like, yeah, no, I completely forgot who I am or where I'm from. But I've been here the whole time. You know, I the, so I, I do like the galaxy spanning lore for this. And this, I think, is one of the only times in Warhammer where I've just been like, fucking seriously, how many colonized mm-hmm. planets does the Empire of Man have? And it's just <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to send this clone army to the planet. The one guy was fucking marooned on. Right. Like, that would be lazy writing if it was all just set on Earth, like, in the same <laughs> town. <laughs> I mean, okay, to be fair, it's not like that was the only planet that they were sent to. They were no, kind of no, just, of course not. They were just like, you go to that qua- you go to that quadrant, we're going to send this army to that. Like, they split the galaxy into 20 and sent... Okay, that makes more they sense. They each had yeah, one okay. 20th of the galaxy, so it's a 1 in 20 shot. You know, roll a, roll a okay. d20, they, uh-huh. rolled, they rolled a nat 20 on, on finding their daddy. Yeah, uh, roll dad check. He's rolling that 20. <laughs> so, uh, Lion was... 20 shot. <laughs> okay, all right, all so, right. Lion was appointed leader of the first Legion of Space Marines uh, and members of the Order who passed the Legionis Astartes trials were transformed into First Legion warriors either by mini- implanting them with gene seed organs, as we've mentioned, or if they were too old, because you have to be a young, uh, a virile young boy to receive the, the gene seed of the emperor, uh, oh, yeah. like Luther, who was a mortal man, where Lion was an immortal man. Uh, Luther was too old, so through genetic manipulation, uh, his size, his, his speed, his strength, and his longevity was improved. He, w- he was never made immortal, but he was made uh, much less than mortal, I guess you could say, or much more than mortal, depending on how you look at it, I suppose. Depending on whether or not you want to die. He's yeah. chrono superior. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So after the new Astartes were ready, Johnson, with Luther once more as his second in command, public re- publicly renamed the Legion the Dark Angels after an old Calibanite myth of shadow-clad angels who came from the sky to aid the people of Caliban in their time of need. So, okay, cool. The, the Dark Angels got their name from this uh, home world or this dead world uh, where there was this ancient myth where uh, dark, darkly clad angels would come from the sky and help the Calibanite people in their time of need. So Lion I with, guess that was probably some other legion of space marines or pre-space marine that had come there to help them out when the monsters got out of hand. No, so it, I it, like it's it's a myth. Like that could be the case. So there was no, yeah, it, it would have been pre-space marine at best best because this is a kind of the first legion of space marines okay uh, yeah it would have been pre-space marine at best but more likely than not it was like th- so there was the period of great strife where from uh, the year twenty thousand to the year like twenty eight thousand, like all com- there was warp storms all across the galaxy and like all communication hum- humanity had been spreading out for twenty thousand years and then all communication broke down 
and everyone was like in silence for like seven to eight thousand years where they couldn't they couldn't okay. contact anybody else in the galaxy so like everyone kind of devolved back into myth and legend and all that stuff like we well this is why like everybody is like knights and castles and shit is because they are as isolated in space as humans were in the medieval ages basically i guess yeah and when you think about it the medieval ages was uh 600 years ago uh, to a thousand years ago and yeah. all their myths and legends were from a thousand years before their time at best. And this is like 8,000 yeah. years of complete silence, you know? So they, you know, they, they, they really, they, they, they went back to their roots, I guess you could say of, of prejudice and, and fear mongering. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> so lion would take yep. his, his newfound army <laughs> and he would strike out into the galaxy to earn his own father's approval. The emperor, uh, as oh. the as the Imperium descended on Caliban to introduce drastic changes to the culture, technology, and lifestyle of the people there in the name of creating a more useful homeworld to the Emperor. Is and it still like colonization if you're doing it to your own clones? <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> What's the morality of that? So uh, uh, We don't know yet. He was, yeah. he, was a clone, he was a clone that landed there that the non-clone people elected fairly to the right. office of, of, great, of great leader... And then his clones showed up to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're part of the, the Imperium. He was like, cool, we're part of the Imperium, too. I like the way you think, kid. Okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but the people who were born on Caliban were like n- normal normal enough humans just living their lives generation after generation after generation after generation for okay. however many thousands of years. Well, they had been calling us on like an abandoned space planet it, and then just kind of went from there. And now all of a sudden they're part of the Empire. It's like if, if a bunch of, uh, I don't know, uh, Justin Trudeau clones showed up today to Canada and were like, oh, Justin Trudeau, dude, we're your clones. And he uh-huh. was like, cool, dude. We're part of whatever galactic federation you were a part of. Okay. All right. So, and, so honestly, I think there was a clone. Whenever he got his second trimester or term or whatever the thing is when he came his back. His second trimester? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> he had an evil beard. Fucking oh, pardon that's me. True. That's true. <laughs> yeah. He did have oh, after yeah. his second trimester. He did have an evil beard. <laughs> yeah. Just look up uh, Justin Trudeau second trimester, and I'm sure Rule Thirty Four doesn't have something for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, know Justin Trudeau inflation porn. And then <laughs> and then all the Justin Trudeau clones come into Canada and start saying, "Okay, we need to do this for the Galactic Federation because we're now a Galactic Federation country." You know. Right. Right. We well we move from like a fucking. Now we take the queen off our money and then we put on Justin Trudeau, but he's fucking huge and yeah, yeah. has like a space space well, armor on. They, they come into your house and they start giving you blackface and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not comfortable with this. And they're like, no, 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 no. This is what it's we the do. Galactic Federation. <laughs> this is what we do. Every uh, family in the country gets an Alibaba outfit. We're yeah, all just yeah. like, I'm not really I not, I'm not okay with this. feel okay with this. <laughs> uh, so any dissent against destroying the, the Dark Angels. I get it. Yeah. Any dissent against destroying the old way of life was considered treason and dealt with harshly. So one mission that the Dark Angels, now that they have their leader lion, uh, they've been dubbed the Dark Angels. It was the first legion of space marines, and now they're the Dark Angels. Uh, And they're off into the galaxy to uh, conduct the Great Crusade with, with a Primarch at their head. Okay, so they just get roped into the whole thing. Well, I mean, the dark the dark angels were already doing that. Oh, excuse me, that's, I, I forgot that the Primarch was he was marooned on that planet already. Yeah, right, exactly, sorry. exactly. So he was like, "Yeah, we'll we'll totally do this." And they they turned a bunch of the 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 members of the order, the Calvinites, into Astartes, into Space Marines to do this with them. So Luther's there with and, them. There was a ton of right, other okay. like any any young enough, virile enough boy was turned into a Space Marine and became uh, one of the Dark Angels. So the Dark Angel, one of their first missions, uh, or one mission that they were assigned to, was the assimilation of the planet Sarosh, or Sarosh, into the Imperium. A seemingly trivial task. The Saroshi, ruled by a planet-wide bureaucracy, had expressed interest in joining the Imperium, after all. So they're, they're told, hey, we got, it. we got a line from these guys. They said they want to join the Imperium. Just go recruit them. That's all you got to do. Just go show up. You know, Recruiting the paperwork, basically. Cross your T's, dot your I's, get them to sign, you know, get them to agree, agree to the terms and conditions. We'll bring them into the Imperium, and then you can go on to killing more Xenos. Go to their universities, start handing out cheap gene seeds to all the students who are in <laughs> debt there. It's going to be great. So it seemed that the, the Saroshi held similar secular beliefs to what was called the Imperial Truth, which was just the, the belief that, 
no kings, no gods, no whatever. Very Ayn Rand. Very, uh, you know, we're we're mankind. We're going to spread through the galaxy. We're going to take over everything. That's our right. Ba 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 ba. Which which very much changes after the Horus Heresy when the God Emperor of Mankind is deified and be- becomes the actual God Emperor of Mankind. Yeah. Okay. Um. Again, you could you could probably go go back and listen to our Horus Heresy Horus Heresy episodes, and we'll talk more about that. Uh. The truth was far more sinister. The Soroshi secretly worshipped the chaotic energies of the warp, they called the Malachim, and saw the anti-religious stance of the pre-heresy Imperium as evil. So the Imperium at the time was very anti-religion. Like, again, no gods, no kings, only man. Um, You're not allowed to worship because that's dumb and bullshit. So uh, just shut up, believe in your government, and you'll be okay. Uh the Soroshi, being the evil people in this story, were like, "That's fucked up, dude. You can't just tell people that." Uh, so they were they're they're labeled as evil, but uh, it was unknown to the Imperium at the time. So on a diplomatic mission, the leader of the Soroshi brought a nuclear device onto the ship of Lion and Luther um, in an attempt to destroy the entire fleet command structure. Uh, right before denouncing the emperor to Lion's face and getting a power sword through the sternum as a re- as a reward. So he was like, uh, uh, sorry, I just need to set down my incredibly heavy luggage. Do you have somewhere <laughs> out in the open I can put it, preferably? Yeah. Oh, by the way, fuck your emperor. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know. I don't know what this guy was thinking, but it, like, it was literally that, where he like brings something on board and then he's like, cool. So all my stuff is dropped off. I'm all set up back in my room. So fuck you. Fuck your emperor. I think you're a piece of shit. I think he's a piece of shit. Uh, and he gets stabbed to death by a uh, sword. Chaos for life. Chaos for life, bitches. So I think a martyr just is planning on getting killed and then maybe wreaking some havoc. So <laughs> he's totally, he totally knew what he was doing, right? I mean, yeah. But I, he would have wreaked more havoc if he just kept his fucking mouth shut. And, and like, if he just pressed the button himself rather than taking the sword through the sternum and was just like, I'm on the ship. Oh, Let yeah. me just fuck. Give me a detonate switch. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I don't know the context of the actual dialogue that they had. Maybe it was like, oh, Lion found him out. And in his la- it, with his last breath, he denounced the emperor or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Nervously uh, checking the inside of his atomic briefcase to make yeah. sure there was still a nuke. Still yeah. a nuke in there. He's like, oh, my God. Uh so the nuclear device was found by Luther and a librarian named Zahario. They managed to eject the, sh- the shuttle that it was on, or they throw it into like an escape pod and, and shoot it into space, or it, it came on a yeah, shuttle. Yeah. They shoot the shuttle out into space. For his bravery, Luther was condemned for ever, ever having allowed the device on the ship in the first place. Uh, disgrace, Luther was sent back to Caliban with Zahariel to serve as a steward there. <laughs> what so, the fuck? It, it, wait, what is he? He's not the TSA on this right. spaceship, right? <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> literally, fuck? literally the second in command, and it's like, how could you let that? How could you let that guy bring that shuttle to this ship? It's like you told me to, you told me to to bring him on a shuttle to the ship. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want me to do? Um, yeah, but he, he he's told, and I don't know. I couldn't find if this was without reading the books that this actually came from. If this was Lion doing this, or if this was like some like imperial bureaucrat who was like um no but actually it was your responsibility you signed the form right here as you can see you signed this tsf form 22 right okay, here yeah. uh for reception of uh shuttles and uh there's clearly a clause right here that says there's no nuclear devices or armaments on side the ship in question <laughs> uh so your your signature here clearly proves that you were at fault and uh he's just like forced to go back to caliban or if it was actually like a dramatic moment between him and lion was like you betrayed my trust you gotta go back to caliban now Okay. Should be an actor. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Really good. Uh, I I hope I had the listeners as gross as I had Jamie. Uh, yeah. So uh, Lion's fame in the meantime would continue to grow. Luther was sentenced to this now backwater planet to watch his glory be stolen. While yeah. Lion is like, bah, 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 I'm I'm the emperor's first child. I'm I'm going about the universe just fucking solving all these problems. So when Lion would return years later, Crusade's done. Horus Heresy, done. We solved it. We fixed all that. Everybody loves the Emperor now. Everybody will love the Emperor forever. All our problems are done, okay? Everybody loves the Emperor. He's just Raymond. He's got his his brother. (laughs) Ah, God Emperor. (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't trust these demons of the warp. <laughs> I don't know about that, Emperor. I think I should problem. I'm very tall. <laughs> <laughs> What's his wife's name? I cannot remember. It's been so long since I've seen that. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I ever really... I, I'm sure I did watch Everybody Loves Raymond once or twice, but I didn't watch it that much. Oh, it came on. Because was... he always says his wife's name in that 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 voice that Peter just did. Ray Romano's stupid fucking voice. There. <laughs> Ray Romano voice. Hey. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway. Oh, hang so, on. I'm going to find it here. Uh, Debra. Debra. <laughs> <laughs> It's got the mom tattoo and everything. His mom lives next door. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's your Master art. Of mankind. <laughs> there's your artist. Everybody loves the emperor. Yeah. Everybody loves the master of mankind, Ray Romano. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, line line decides to go back go back home to Caliban. He's like, you know what? Whether whether or not all the, the problems in the galaxy were actually solved or whether or not he was just like, it's time now. Uh, he's like, let's, let's go home. Time to go home, huh? Luther, on the other hand, uh, has been sitting there. Greetings. He's like immortal enough. So for the centuries during the crusade, he's probably just there stewing in his own anger, right? Probably, yeah. Greed and jealousy just been fed to him by the ruinous powers for years now, you know? Uh, uh, he, he was greedy and he was jealous and that's like fertile soil for a... Uh, uh, the the chaos gods to plant a seed in you, if you will, much much like the emperor did to the younger, more virile boys. Uh, the chaos gods, they're like, no, we we don't we don't discriminate here. We'll take old men too, you know. Yeah, they, <laughs> old jealous crusty men. Why old, not? We'll old better men. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Uh, so they 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 plant. They, he he's jealous and he's greedy, and they just like they feed into that for years and years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and, years. and they're just like, oh yeah, you know what. You you deserve to be out there. You deserve to be out there killing people in the name of the Emperor. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you should have been the one to to chain sword that guy in half. Come on. How how could you let how could you let them do this to you? Um and eventually Luther, like any of us would, succumb to that peer pressure. He takes up smoking. Okay. He gives him, <laughs> he, he gives himself up to the ruinous powers and he says, You know what? You're right. I'm going to be a servant of chaos. I'm going to be an agent of chaos. So Lion comes home, and the planetary defenses of Caliban would not greet him with open arms. They greet him with uh, open open fire. They, the, all the orbital artillery. Is yeah. Like, Whoa. Just uh, that's th- that's getting shot instead of a hug. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Open, <laughs> open fire instead of open arms. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he, he goes back to you know, imagine imagine for, imagine if you will for a second a situation we've all been in. You go to space. You come home. Earth's planetary defenses start shooting at you. You're like, what the hell? I'd be shocked. What yeah. the hell, dude? I, I live here. I live here, bro. What's going on? Uh, but Lion is like, you know what? This is bullshit. I don't care if you're my stepdad. Okay? I'm going to fire back on you. And he uh, and he does. He uh, All his ships, all his whole fleet opens fire on the planet of Caliban. They crack the very tectonic plates of the world, uh, causing them to crack and shift. Uh, following the bombardment, Lion personally leads an Astarte strike force into the primary fortress monastery of Caliban called the Tower of Angels. So there's one, okay. there's one HQ, and he's like, he just like peppers him, peppers him with shotgun blasts from Pluto or whatever from the edge of the solar system. He's like, okay, we're there's coming like a, in. But they have a Vatican City, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's like, okay. we're going, we're going, we're heading straight for the Vatican. Beam me up. So uh, the battle between Lion and Luther was fierce. Um, they go back and forth, you know, chain swords, power swords, guns, psychic powers, all this stuff. Lion, Lion bests <laughs> his friend, but in a moment of weakness, where he's like, should I kill him? Should I not? I probably shouldn't kill him, right? He did rescue me from the forest. He did rescue me from the forest. I was squatting. He gave me my first step of clean water in a millennia. So yeah. I, I kind of have feelings for him. I thought poop. I thought poop was clothes, and he told me poop's not clothes. So I, st- <laughs> I stopped wearing poop like clothes. Uh, <laughs> and it was in that moment that Luther struck him a devastating psychic blow. Watching his okay, wait. Sorry, just quickly. I didn't know the Space Marines could also have psychic powers. So the Imperium can have psychic powers. He so Luther specifically is not a space marine. He wasn't given the gene seed. He was just genetically modified to have oh, longer okay. life and be stronger and all this stuff. So he's kind of like a he's kind of like a cadet, I guess. 
you know okay where it's like oh yeah you're he's, part you're part of the group but you're not really like part of the yeah. group he's like a super psyker and also working for chaos now because they've corrupted his mind so he uses okay. psychic okay exactly so presumably the ruinous powers gave him the psychic abilities which he hadn't had his whole life but okay. uh, again <clears throat> listen to our last episode of of about Warhammer 40k, the Tyranids, and we'll get more into uh, where psychic powers come from and all that stuff. Uh, so watching his oldest friend dying, Luther's mind would finally clear, and in that moment of clarity, the ruinous powers would realize that they had lost a pawn. They're like, oh, damn it. Friendship really is the strongest magic and uh, <laughs> would no longer have a hold on him. In, in their rage, the ruinous powers sent a warp storm to devastate the planet of Caliban. Already weakened from Lion's orbital barrage, Caliban was utterly torn apart, imploding into a field of orbital debris. That's pretty fucking rad, though. So uh, they had they had their battle. Uh, he lashed out with uh, I use a uh, psi beam, and it's like um, Lion is confused, uh, hurts himself uh-huh. in his confusion, and then uh, Luther hurts himself in his confusion because he destroys the whole yeah. fucking planet. Yeah, another planet falls apart. <laughs> in your, I, was, I was actually thinking about Pokemon, but I was thinking more of like he turned his friend to stone, but then his tears turned him not into stone and everybody raised up like the end of the Pokemon oh, movie. I, I, brought, I brought you back to life just in time for you to watch the planet explode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so actually, the planet does explode, but conveniently, the Tower of Angels, along with a massive fragment of the planet which it had been built on, survived mostly intact. So, uh, oh, it's the fucking Doom Fortress now. Yeah, so it was kind of just like this floating rock in space with this floating stone tower in space built on top of it. When That's it was awesome. when it was searched by the Dark Angels afterwards, they found an incoherently babbling Luther, dubbed the Arch Traitor of the Fallen Angels, who are, which is uh, everybody who followed Luther when they because it wasn't just Luther sent back to Caliban, so all the Space Marines that were sent back to Caliban with them were dubbed the Fallen okay, Angels, yeah. and they they became traitors. Um, they they found Luther babbling incoherently, describing how uh, Lion had been rescued by the Washers in the Dark, a small humanoid creature uh, native to Caliban, to heal from his wounds. So they're like, "Oh, the goblin!" He was like, "The goblins in the forest came and got him." Uh, okay, I I like didn't the- kill him. The goblins in the forest showed up and took him away. Uh, <laughs> Is that like the the wolves that raised Mowgli? Like came and came back and grabbed him to bring him uh, back to the forest, basically. Uh, essentially, yeah. Uh, okay. L- Lion's body was never recovered. Oh shit! So who knows? Maybe it was. Maybe it was the little goblins came back and got him, or maybe, uh, maybe L- Luther killed him, and his warp energies just disintegrated the body. Maybe he threw him out a window. Well, we'll never know. Or the gravity of a planet flying to pieces atomized him. Like that could happen too. Who knows? And that's uh, that's uh, as far as I want to get into the Dark Angels. I don't want to go further than that. Uh, cool, all right. uh, until maybe we get to chapters in the future um, there, there is a second founding of the Space Marines it's decreed seven Terran years after the death of Horus uh, where all the okay. Space Marine legions like I said the 20 of them are broken down and refounded as smaller more flexible uh, formations essentially okay cool <clears throat> yeah so the chapters are never more than a thousand uh, units like there, you never have more than a thousand Space Marines per chapter but okay. you can have a, a limitless number of uh, in a legion. So the right. legions all get disbanded. They're like, this is unruly. You can't have one person controlling all this. So I'll leave you except with... Except the god emperor. Except the god emperor, I guess. Yeah. He's got a quote for us. Yeah, I'll leave you guys with a, a quote from the god emperor himself about uh, the space marines. They shall be my finest warriors, these men who gave themselves to me. Like clay, I shall mold them, and in the furnace of war, I shall forge them. They shall be of iron will and steely sinew. In great armor, I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons shall they be armed. They will be untouched by plague or diseased. No sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies, and machines that no foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are the defenders of humanity. They are my space marines, and they shall know no fear. Cool. Yeah, that is cool. I, I I gotta say, like like a seventh grader starts a a speech with a Merriam-Webster dictionary definition. <laughs> you, you finish with quotes all the time, but I love it. They're good. They're good. Uh, Webster's yeah. dictionary describes the Astartes as <laughs> <laughs> the f- the fusing you of two hot metals. Like bulwark against the terror. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very uh, much, James. 
down now and like all the other children are like quivering in terror in the room <laughs> uh, honestly <laughs> the <foot> child sits <laughs> down. <laughs> there's so, there's so much good space marine and 40k lore like we were saying out there that yeah. it's just like there are books and books and books written about this stuff and there's so much lore and there's there is so much cool fiction built built behind it which what i love about it so much uh, I haven't played 40k since high school. I, I, you know, I have some Age of Sigmar figures right now, but I still love the 40k universe so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you guys like it and you want to let me know and you want to tell me to do more of it, please re- reach out to me uh, at Ethan the Dead Man on Twitter or at Lore Boys on Twitter. Um, that's probably Warhammer. The best place. The other game, find. Total War Two. That one's 66 percent off right now. Ooh. You can get into them. I was saying, we'll I'm, I might pick it up. We'll, we'll take our check creative assembly whenever you uh, hear this. <laughs> but guys, oh, when can uh, they start writing off game purchases as tax deductible things? I think is we this need a to business? incorporate first, which okay. is like three hundred dollars. So we totally could. Yeah, <laughs> let's spend more than that on video games. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, we will. We'll go straight. And we get a company fun- car. If you want to find me on the internet and help fund my video game addiction, you can find me at uh, facebook.com slash James the Miller. Find me on Facebook today. That's And Peter? Awesome. Uh, I'm at Pete O'Donohue or at Lore Boys Podcast on Instagram. Uh, come check out our artwork and our pets and the loreboys.com. And if you want to send us mean or nice messages that we read on air, it's loreboyspodcast at gmail.com. Oh, uh, actually something real that was created from last week. Uh, we have a Minecraft server. And if you want to play on the Minecraft server, we've got some fans in there. We're building some lovely stuff. Uh, get into the Discord, and I'll give you the info for that. I don't want to put it out publicly because I don't want people to ruin my castle. Lowboys.com <laughs> slash Discord. We'll take you there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and anybody who wants to support the show financially wants to help support Jamie's video game addiction. Uh, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the lore boys, slash lore boys, slash the lore boys. I never I find it. The lore boys, who knows? Branding is, branding is hard, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let me bring it up. Uh, uh, patreon.com slash the lore boys. Um, and I'll take you to our Patreon. If you don't trust Patreon, we do, of course, and always have had uh, lore boys prime. It's our own uh, new version of uh, Patreon. It's like we took Discord and we invented it ourselves, but with Patreon instead of Discord. Uh, so we, we take your money and or goods and services and we give you back money, goods or services, depending on the week. Honestly, we, we kind of flip flop a lot. Uh, so this, <laughs> this week we are offering something pretty special. I'd say we are taking money, offering a good, uh, we're taking your money. So send us 20 bucks. Exactly. No more, no less. And we'll send you some space cow milk. We've been breeding cows, uh, but we've been exposing them to a uh, horrible radiation from space. And we've been mutating them into super cows, basically. So I guess you could say this is kind of like gene seed milk. And I'm not going to promise you any superpowers, but there's a chance gene you get superpowers. So gross. There, there 30%, is like, 2% skim gene <laughs> seed. What do you want in your coffee, baby? <laughs> there, there's, a ch- there's a chance that you drink this milk and then you start lactating every day, baby. Okay? Yeah? Does oh. that not sound like a superpower you'd love to have? <laughs> Just like any any good old cow? <laughs> oh, update on the Minecraft server. Someone just sent me a screenshot. They built a giant thing that just says fart. Okay, so good. that's great. That's yeah, good. That's the that's cool you can expect on that server. It's popping off. And that would constitute <laughs> a lore boys, lore boys. goodbye. Out. Why did they, James, my name's James, why did they put the breathing hole and the eating hole so close? Why'd you do this, God? They didn't do it for a whale. That would, I know, I wish I could just... Maybe maybe whales are God's chosen people. That's why they get so big. Oh, oh. whale big. <laughs> whale big, therefore more holy. <laughs> and they have a blow holy. Yeah. The bigger the body, hey, the bigger the body, the closer to God, huh? Oh, yeah, baby. (laughs) If I get to heaven, it's all whales. I'm going to be pissed off.